Bismillahirrahman Rahim. Today I am going to start your next topic regarding the rectum. Anatomy of the rectum and the different diseases of the rectum. Today my lecture is about the surgical anatomy of the rectum. Now the learning objective, the purpose of this lecture is that at the end of this lecture, the student should be able to understand the anatomy of the rectum so that we can later on associate the anatomy with its relationship to the surgical diseases and treatment. Rectum is basically a part of the colon. Rectum begins where the tinea coli of the sigmoid colon joins to form a continuous outer longitudinal muscle layer which is at the level of sacral pomontry. So here you can see, here you can see it is, it is the beginning of the rectum. These are the tinea coli, you can see tinea coli. They, here they are joining to form the continuous outer longitudinal muscle layer of the rectum. This is rectum. So, rectum is without tinea coli. This is one identification point for the rectum. Now, this is the distal part of the large cat. As you can see, when we count the different parts of the colon, it is the distal part of the large cut and it is the pelvic part of the elementary tract. The humeral rectum is about 12 to 18 centimeter in length. So the length of the rectum from here to here is about 12 to 18 centimeter in an ordinary no, adult. Before going to the different aspect of the surgical anatomy, I would like to describe, tell about the embryo embryology of the rectum, how it develops embryologically. Now the embryological hindgut forms the upper rectum. So the rectum, development of the rectum, embryological origin of the rectum, it has two parts. The upper part of the rectum which forms from the hindgut while the lower rectum is derived from the cloaca and this is surrounded by extraperitoneal connective tissue. Now the primitive gut tube is suspended dorsally by a mesentery throughout its length to form the mesorectum. Mesorectum that is tissue around the rectum is embryological origin. The muscular layers of the rectum are derived from the mesenchyme muscles, the muscles part of the rectum. Lining upper part of the lining of upper rectum is derived from the endoderm. Muscular layers of the rectum, they are derived from the mesenchyme that accompanies the endodermal part of the anoderm. With the inner circular layer preceding the outer longitudinal layer, Keep in mind, and this is, occurs in the seventh week of embryonic development. The levator and eye muscles and external anal sphincter muscles, they form from within the surrounding mesenchyme and they grow to make contact with each other and with bundles of smooth muscles from the outer longitudinal layer of the rectal wall. A layer of undifferentiated mesenchyme which separates the rectal muscle layer from the levator ani muscle and the muscle layer of the future anal canal. So this was about the embryology development of the rectum. Now if you go on to the gross anatomy of the rectum, its location, it is located in the posterior part of the lesser pelvis. This is posterior part of the lesser pelvis. The pelvis we usually divide into a major pelvis and a minor lesser pelvis. It 
rectum is located in the posterior part of the lesser pelvis. It is in front of the lower three pieces of sacrum and coccyx. Here you can see these are the th three pieces of sacrum and this is coccyx and this rectum lies in front of that. So what is the extent of the rectum? It begins at the rectosigmoid junction. Rectosigmoid where? Sigmoid colon ends and the rectum begins which is at the level of third sacral vertebra. It ends at the inorectal junction, inorectal junction which is about 2 to 3 centimeter in front of and a little below the coccyx here. Here you can see this is coccyx and just below that. This is inorectal junction. So it ends at the inorectal junction which is about 2 to 3 centimeter in front and a little below the coccyx. If we talk about the course of the rectum, the rectum follows the curve of the sacrum. If we see the uh, sagittal section of the uh, pelvis, we can see rectum follows the curve of the sacrum, which is concave inside and it ends at the, uh, at the inorectal junction, as pre I told in the previous slide. Uh, muscle sling, which is puborectalis muscle, this encircles the posterior and lateral aspects of the junction, creating, the, and this junction is inorectal junction. So this create, this sling creates the inorectal angle, which is normally about 120 degree. So this puborectalis muscle, which is in the form of a sling, it creates an angle at the inorectal junction which I'll tell you later on that it has a, has a function in the continence of the, uh, of the face fecal matter. Now the course of the rectum within the hollow is firstly it goes downwards and backwards then it goes downwards and in the lower part third it goes downwards and forwards. So this is the course of uh, a fractum in the minor pelvis. If we talk about the parts, then curves, peritoneal reflection of the rectum, they are important. You must should know. The rectum has three lateral. Uh, if we talk the, about the curves, curvatures rectum he has three lateral curvatures the upper and lower curvatures are convex towards the right side keep in mind and the middle curvature middle curve is convex to the left so in an upper one third and the lower one third in a coronal section this curve is towards the right it is convex towards the right side and the middle one is convex, the curve is convex to the, towards the left side. We usually divide rectum into three parts, equal parts, which is upper third, middle third, and then the lower one third. So the three, we divide the rectum into three parts. The upper third is mobile, and as far as the peritoneal covering is concerned, peritoneal reflection is concerned, it has a peritoneal covering. This peritoneum covers the uh, one third of the rectum interiorly and laterally. So the upper one third is covered by peritoneum, whole of the interior aspect and all the lateral aspect, not the posterior which is in the hollow of the sacrum. The middle one third where the peritoneum here peritoneum covers only the interior aspect and a very small part of the lateral surface so basically middle one third of the rectum 
covers only the interior uh, in here the peritoneum covers only the interior aspect of the uh, rectum the low one third is extra peritoneal so this part of the rectum we really call it extra peritoneal it lies deep in the pelvis it is surrounded by fatty mesorectum and it is separated from the adjacent structures by facial layers these are very important facial layers and i am going to tell about in the next slides so the lower upper one third and the middle one third they are within the peritoneum and the low one third of the rectum is extra peritoneal keep in mind this is very important in many aspects affections like injuries may we count this is whether the injury is extra peritoneal whether it is intra peritoneal so basically this parts of the rectum uh, which uh, make this decision lower third injury is usually extra peritoneal so fascias we are talking about the, the, the surrounding there are fascias the low one third of the rectum is separated by facial condensations around low one third there are facial condensation the fascias around the low one third these fascia anteriorly it is called fascia of the non villier the posteriorly it is the valdeer's fascia so these two important named fascias they are important and their significance is they play a role in the spread of the cancer malignancy of the rectum fascia of the non villier which basically this is named after a french anatomist and surgeon charles dinon villiers it is after his name it separates the prostate and urinary bladder from the rectum in males so in males it is anterior fascia dinon villier it separates the prostate and the urinary bladder from the rectum the lower one third of the rectum the structure corresponds to the recto vaginal fascia in the female also there is a difference between male female pelvis so in female recto vaginal fascia this structure corresponds to that now fascia of denal villier this is recto prostatic fascia fascia of denal villier it also inhibits the posterior spread of prostatic adenocarcinoma so it's a strong layer helps in this uh, to prevent the spread of the prostatic cancer therefore invasion of the rectum is less common than is invasion of other contiguous structures because of this fascia of the non villier here here you can see this is this is cut uh, fascia incised fascia this layer and on, on this sag sagittal section you can see this cut here it is between this is prostate the urinary bladder and this is behind this this fascia of the non villier now what is valdeer's fascia this rectum is separated from behind by another facial layer which is valdeer's fascia a very strong layer it separates it from the coccyx and the lower two sacral vertebra here you can see this is this is this is fascia valdeer's fascia this one here you can see this layer fascia of valdeer's fascia which separates the rectum from behind this the, the sac coccyx and the lower two sacral vertebra these facial layers are surgically important these two fascias they are surgically important as they are barrier to malignant invasion so in that sense it is it is their significance another aspect of surgical gross anatomy of the valves is valves of the houston rectum contain has valves of houston when we do proctoscopy when we go inside the rectum while doing sigmoidoscopy colonoscopy we see these valves of houston these are basically transverse folds of rectum also called houston valves 
they are the semi lunar transverse folds of the rectal wall that protrudes into the rectum so what are these hostel valves these are transverse folds of rectum transverse folds of the rectal wall that protrudes into the rectum and this we can see while doing proctoscopy sigmoidoscopy colonoscopy their use seems to be so what is their use why why these valves of houston it's probably seems to support the weight of the fecal matter and prevent its urging towards the anus which would produce a strong urge to defecate so in that sense it helps it prevents the urging its urging towards the anus these valves of houston these folds are about 12 meter, millimeter in width and they are composed of the circular muscle coat of the rectum keep in mind this contain the circular muscle coat of the rectum these valves of houston they are usually three in number sometimes even a fourth is found so valves of houston here you can see these are the valves of houston this here upper one this one is the valves of houston and this is the valve of houston so these superior rectal valve middle rectal valve inferior rectal valve so you can see in this photograph these three valves of houston so one is located the upper one is located it is located in the one is situated near the commencement of the rectum on the right side a second extends inwards from the left side of the tube opposite the middle of the sacrum and then a third and the largest and the most constant projects backwards from the fore part of the rectum opposite the fundus of the urinary bladder when a fourth is present it is situated nearly about 2.5 cm above the anus verge on the left and posterior wall of the tube so these are the valves of houston now as far as the relations of the rectum they are concerned when we describe them we have to describe them separately in male and female so what are the interior relations interior relation when we talk about the interior male they are different in female they are different in male interiorly urinary bladder is there seminal vesicles ureters prostate and urethra they come in the interior relation of the rectum in female the interior relations are pouch of the douglas then that is recto vagina recto uterine pouch interiorly then is the uterus then is cervix and upper part of the posterior vaginal wall that comes as the interior relation shape of the rectum in females laterally in males rectum has the relations of they have there are lateral ligaments middle rectal artery obturator internus muscle side wall of the pelvis bony side wall of the pelvis pelvic autonomic plexuses they are also come in the later relations of the rectum in female again they are almost similar lateral ligaments middle rectal artery obturator internus side wall of the pelvis pelvic autonomic plexus levator and anus so you can see in male and female lateral relations laterally structured same structure they are there now what are the posterior uh, structures which lie posteriorly in the rectum in male posteriorly it is the sacrum and coccyx loose areolar tissue facial condensation as i told you superior rectal artery which runs in the and comes in the posterior relation of the rectum 
then hypogastric nerves and uh, these are very important when we do dissection of rectum and of procedure anterior section abdominal pleural section then, then they are very important when we are doing dissection in the hollow of the sacrum these hypogastric nerves because their injury can lead to some complications posterior then they are located lymphatics similarly female sacrum and coccyx ileus same same relations uh, as in males sacrum coccyx loose area tissue facial condensations superior rectal artery hypogastric nerves and lymphatic so here we can see if when we talk about the relations relations and structures around, uh, around the rectum male female difference only comes when we are talking about the interior structure which lie interior to the rectum now what is the blood supply what is the blood supply arterial supply we can count there are three vessels predominantly it is the superior rectal artery is the main arterial supply of the rectum keep in mind so the major arterial blood supply is from superior rectal artery now what is superior rectal artery it is the direct continuation of it is direct continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery here you can see this is inferior mesenteric artery it is here continuing as superior rectal artery this is superior rectal artery you can see that this is continuation of inferior mesenteric artery this is the main blood supply arterial supply of the rectum superior rectal artery now middle rectal artery middle rectal artery is a branch of internal iliac artery keep in mind it comes from the, this this is here you can see this is internal iliac artery and the middle rectal artery you can see it comes from the internal iliac vessel middle rectal artery is a branch of internal iliac artery the third arterial supply is from inferior rectal artery now the inferior rectal artery is a branch of internal pudendal artery it is a branch of internal pudendal artery this is inferior rectal artery which comes from the internal pudendal artery which runs in the alcox canal on the side wall of the pelvis so these are three vessels now i'm again repeat arterial supply of the rectum is by three vessel keep in mind one is superior rectal artery it is, then is the middle rectal artery inferior rectal artery but keep in mind the predominant main arterial supply is by superior rectal artery which is a branch and this is branch is basically continuation direct continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery and it comes in the posterior relation of the rectum it runs in the posterior hollow of the sacrum what is the venous drainage when we say blood supply another aspect of blood supply is venous drainage of the rectum the venous drainage of the rectum parallels the arterial supply so we can say superior rectal veins middle rectal veins and inferior rectal veins the superior rectal vein drains into the portal system and this is via the inferior mesenteric vein the superior rectal vein goes into the this drainage is into portal system and which is how that because it continues that inferior it goes into the inferior mesenteric it continues as inferior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric vein sorry it's an inferior mesenteric vein which drains into the splenic vein and splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein they form the portals a portal vein so superior rectal vein its blood goes into the portal system middle rectal vein drains into the internal iliac vein this is not portal system 
main arterial supply by the superior actal artery, main venous drainage by the superior actal vein which goes into the portal system. This is very important. You must keep in mind. The middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal venous drainage is into systemic veins. Middle rectal veins drains into the internal iliac vein. Inferior rectal vein drains into the internal pudendal vein and subsequently into the internal iliac veins, which is a part of the systemic venous system. Again, I repeat, this is very important. Main arterial supply is of the rectum is by a superior rectal vein. Main venous drainage of the rectum is by a superior rectal vein, which drains into the portal venous system. A submucosal plexus, which is deep to the columns of Morgagni, forms the hemorrhoidal plexus and this drains into the all three veins. Basically, when we will talk about the uh, venous drainage of the uh, inner canal, the hemorrhoidal plexus is, they come and from there they go upwards and they drain into these three rectal veins. So, this was basically some mucosal plexus deep to columns of Morgagni, which are located in the anal canal. They form the hemorrhoidal plexuses and they drain these hemorrhoidal plexuses. They drain into all three rectal veins. Lymphatic drainage. Again, this is a very important aspect of the surgical anatomy of the rectum. You should be aware lymphatic drainage because their significance arms when we are talking about the rectal malignant tumors, rectal carcinomas. Upper and middle rectum drains superiorly into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes. Upper and middle rectum is basically these two thirds uh, they are a relation with the peritoneal third lower third is extra peritoneal so upper one third and middle one third of the rectum that drains lymphatic drainage is superior so get that goes superiorly into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes the lower rectum drains both superiorly that it goes into inferior mesenteric lymph nodes and also laterally into the internal iliac lymph nodes on the side wall of the pelvis these internal they are lymph nodes located along the internal iliac vessels. So, low rectum drains into the superior mesenteric lymph nodes, but also its lymphatic drainage goes into the lateral wall, which is internal iliac lymph nodes. However, if the usual upwards roots are blocked, so keep in mind it is the upward lymphatic drainage which is important mean lymphatic drainage of the rectum is upwards especially when we are doing uh, tumors of the upper middle upper one third of the rectum middle one third of the rectum its main lymphatic drainage is upwards into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes it is the low one third which also drains into the internal ile group of lymph nodes so if the usual upward roots are blocked due to tumor by the, these lymph nodes, sometimes they come blocked in advanced malignancy, then flow can reverse, which is mainly upwards. Now it can reverse. It is then possible to find metast metastatic lymph nodes on the side wall of the pelvis along the middle rectal vessels or even in the inguinal region. So, in the lower one third of the carcinoma, the low one third of the rectum, when the upper flow is blocked, then there is a possibility that even the internal uh, uh, inguinal region, lymph nodes located there, they can sometimes become involved that is along the inferior rectal artery.
here, here you can see the the uh, the lymphatic drainage at least the whole colon you can see different types of lymph nodes at the colic then along the vessels ultimately you can see going up to the periotic lymph nodes and following the inferior mesenteric vessel and the inferior mesenteric vessel these are the lymph nodes so apicolic group of lymph nodes paracolic group of lymph nodes then principal and the intermediate group and ultimately they go into the periotic group so except the rectum all the rest of the lymph node of the colon they have four groups starting from the apicolic paracolic intermediate and the periotic here and from the rectum it is basically the three group of lymph nodes they drain upper zone middle zone and lower zone as i talked to you about the lymphatic drainage of these parts of the rectum so this, this is, you can see the lymphatic in this photograph you can see the lymphatic drainage of the colon as well as the rectum and different parts of the rectum they are basically described in this photograph now the, if we talk about the nerve supply sympathetic nerve supply of the rectum is from l1 and l2 fibers the lateral column segments is l1 and l2 and they come through the superior rectal and inferior hypogastric plexuses these sympathetic fibers they come through the superior rectal and inferior hypogastric plexus their function is they cause vasoconstriction they are inhibitory to the musculature of the rectum when there is stimulation of the sympathetic nerve supply they inhibit the inhibit the musculature of the rectum they are motor to the internal sphincter motor fibers to the internal sphincter inhibit the external sphincter carry sensation of pain so the pain sensation in from the rectum they go through the sympathetic nerve supply which is from lumbar 1 l1 and l2 of the lateral sympathetic column of the spinal cord parasympathetic nerve supply of the rectum is basically from the sacral outflow it is s2 s3 or s4 fibers they pass via pelvic splanchnic nerves and the inferior hypogastric plexuses to the pelvic or to the rectal plexus so this is the root of the parasympathetic nerve supply which is basically sacral outflow it is from s2 s3 and s4 sacral segments they pass via the pelvic splanchnic nerves and then inferior hypogastric plexus is ultimately to the rectal plexus the parasympathetic these nerve fibers they are motor to the musculature of the rectum sympathetic wall they were they were basically inhibitory to the musculature of the rectum they were sympathetic was vasoconstrictor the parasympathetic fibers they are inhibitory to the internal sphincter while they were sympathetic were motor to the internal sphincter so this you can see so parasympathetic fiber when they are stimulated they inhibit the internal sphincter and the the parasympathetic fibers they also carry sensation of pain and distension which occurs in the rectum so pain it is all through through the sympathetic as well as parasympathetic distension sensation of distension in the rectum is through the parasympathetic nerve fibers so this was all about the surgical anatomy of the rectum different aspects i have told you gross embryology gross anatomy then the blood supply of the uh, rectum and the nerve supply of rectum this was all about to, uh, uh, the surgical anatomy of the rectum and it was the subject of the today's lecture so if you have any questions about this topic those question you can uh, forward to me in your uh, in your whatsapp group
एंड देन आई विल रिस्पॉन्ड इन दैट ग्रुप ओके थैंक यू जी